Ghost blows out the light. The story that I am about to tell you happened many years ago. In those years, no one lived in the Northeast without knowing about this. Everything is related to the ghost blowing out the light. It has become a terror to the people living here every time it is mentioned. The familiar feeling of everyone is both fear and anger. My own family members are also victims of that ghost. This person is none other than my cousin. He was only about four or five years old, although he didn't remember what happened afterward. But for everyone in the family, it was an unpleasant experience at all. At the time of the story, the dissemination of information to the people was limited, so people in rural areas often had a habit of going to bed very early, especially on winter days. So was my cousin's family, because at that time he was still a child, so he still slept with his parents. Indeed all of you who have lived in the countryside have experienced this feeling at least once. It was indeed an extremely unforgettable experience. What could be happier than being wrapped in a warm blanket next to your parents on long winter nights? That night, like any other night, my cousin's parents had a hard time convincing him to go to sleep. After much effort, my cousin also obeyed and gradually fell asleep. The boy's parents also began to sleep, they were pretty tired after a hard day's work. Everything seemed normal until midnight. While my cousin's whole family was fast asleep, a dark figure appeared outside the bedroom window. Although no one woke up, there seemed to be an invisible pressure from that small shadow pressing down on the people lying on the bed. The three of them seemed to be struggling with a terrible nightmare. Finally, after tossing and turning, my uncle woke up. In the faint light of the winter moon, my uncle dimly saw something standing at his bedroom window. He rubbed his eyes a few times to see what it was. After observing for a while, my uncle was startled when he realized what was looking at him. It's a rather large weasel goblin. My uncle doesn't know how long it has been here. This weasel goblin is unique. It still shows no fear or intention to run away even when discovered. Instead, it turned its eyes to my uncle's. The moment he saw it, my uncle could tell it was a terrifying pair of eyes. A pair of eyes with a faint blue tint and seemed to be extremely angry. Like that, the four eyes looked at each other for an unknown amount of time. My uncle looked into the weasel goblin's eyes for a long time. The feeling of unease grew more assertive in his heart. When he couldn't take it anymore, he stood up and shouted with a loud voice. It wasn't until now that the weasel goblin turned his head to leave, but the way he walked away showed no sign of fear. To make sure the weasel goblin was gone, my uncle got out of bed and walked over to the window to take a look. In the silent night, the shadow of the weasel elf had disappeared entirely. Unexpectedly, in the blink of an eye, it could run so fast. Although there was no trace of the goblin weasel, my uncle continued to observe our yard. It's not uncommon here for goblin weasel to bring lousy luck anymore, so being visited in the middle of the night by a goblin weasel with a peculiar shape as if it was a harbinger of something unlucky. Although he really wanted to find the whereabouts of the goblin weasel. My uncle was afraid of waking up his wife and children, so he gave up that idea. In addition, he was already exhausted, so my uncle decided to go back to bed and go back to sleep. But not long after sleeping, my uncle was awakened by a scream of terror. Startled by the scream, my uncle slowly opened his eyes. He also realized that the scream was his wife's. Although he opened his eyes, it seemed that my uncle still could not get rid of his sleepiness. My uncle grumbled and asked why it was already midnight, and his wife was still screaming with a slightly annoyed voice. It turned out that during her sleep, my aunt woke up to go to the bathroom, but at this moment, she discovered that my cousin was nowhere to be found. As soon as he heard his son disappear, my uncle immediately jumped up, 
the sleepiness immediately disappeared. Like his wife, he was also bewildered. As soon as he heard what his wife said, my uncle was immediately startled. Initially, when he slept with his son, the boy woke up and went out of bed without his knowledge. After a few seconds of surprise, my uncle began to grab his shirt and jump out of bed. He did not forget to call his wife to follow him to find his son. According to my uncle's judgment, the boy couldn't go very far, probably just hanging around near the house. The two of them searched the house first, also, a few times, because of teasing my parents, my cousin hid in the closet until his parents found him, then he refused to come out. But this time it's not like before, the two of them almost turned the house upside down but still no sign of my cousin. After searching the house with no results, they explored the area around the house. While searching, my aunt called my cousin's name, but there was still no response. It's been over an hour, and they still haven't found my cousin. My aunt started to lose her temper. She burst into tears and asked her husband what to do. My uncle was also distraught. Even though it was the middle of a winter night, sweat still collected in large drops on his temples. Fortunately, at this moment, my uncle remained calm, realizing that it was not a good way for them to keep looking. He immediately asked his wife to knock on the doors of the neighboring houses to ask for their help. As they were about to run away to call the neighbors, my uncle suddenly looked up at the roof. He was startled when he discovered that there was a black figure standing on it. Even more terrifying when he realized that the shadow was my cousin, he did not understand how and why the boy was able to climb there. My uncle quickly ran over to where the boy was standing. Although he was distraught, he still did not dare to call for fear that my cousin would be startled. The reason my uncle did this was that the boy's condition was very precarious at the moment. Just move his foot a little more, and the boy will fall to the ground. The closer he got, the better my uncle could see his son's condition. Under the pale winter moon, my cousin's face was as white as the skin of a dead man. This was probably the result of the boy being outside in the cold for so long. Seeing his son's condition like that, the aunt and uncle couldn't help but feel a shiver of fear. Although they did not dare to call out loudly, they still gently called my cousin's name, hoping to hear. After a few minutes of trying, my cousin was finally able to hear her parents calling. The boy slowly turned his head to look at his parents, a face utterly devoid of any expression. After looking at his parents for a while, the boy's stiff face began to move. The whole face remained stiff, but the boy's lips began to move, and finally, a wry smile filled with evil appeared. While my aunt and uncle still didn't understand what was going on with their child, the child did something unexpected. In a split second, after smiling a ghostly smile, my cousin suddenly turned around and jumped off the roof to my aunt and uncle's astonishment. Everything happened so fast that my aunt and uncle barely had time to react. Both seemed to be unable to believe their eyes anymore. By the time they both cried out, it was too late. My aunt and uncle took action, both immediately diving towards my cousin but were a step behind. The boy's feet hit the ground before his parents could run to pick him up. The situation became more and more serious, along with my aunt and uncle's anxiety and fear increasing by the second. Running back to where my cousin had fallen, the two of them shouted as loud as they could but my cousin still didn't react and just lay motionless on the ground. Rushing to hug the boy in her arms, my aunt couldn't help but burst into tears. My uncle also just collapsed beside her without uttering a word. Now his mind is entirely blank. He didn't know what to do to wake up his son. Not knowing how much time passed, the boy finally responded to the call of his parents. It started with very slight movements, but gradually my cousin's face turned pink again. Finally, he called out a small voice to his mother. 
As soon as he woke up, the boy immediately burst into tears, until now he felt the pain coming from his legs. This is also not difficult to understand. Although the roof is not very high, it is still too high for a five-year-old boy. Confirmed that the boy's leg was sprained or possibly broken. Seeing his son's condition like this, my uncle immediately woke up. He told my aunt to try to comfort and take care of my son. As for him, he would run away to find a doctor and quickly return. But before he could run out of the yard, my uncle suddenly stopped. It seemed he had just discovered something unusual. Thanks to the bright moonlight, a small shadow was imprinted on the ground. My uncle looked into the shadow, and it was not difficult for him to see that something was lurking on the roof near the eaves. When my uncle looked up, he discovered that the small shadow was that of a weasel goblin. It was also at this moment that my uncle realized that this weasel goblin was the one that had been creeping by his bedroom window earlier. At this point, the weasel goblin also began to stare at my uncle's face as if defiant. It can be confirmed that this is a weasel goblin at night because it has extraordinary eyes. His eyes were bright blue, which my uncle claimed were the same eyes that had stared at him through the bedroom window so he recognized it at a glance. Once again, their eyes met. Although not a coward, my uncle shivered when the weasel goblin stared at him. He later said that he would never forget that look, a look full of hatred and resentment. Right at this moment, the weasel goblin opened its mouth as if smiling. Initially, its eyes were already terrifying. At this point, it opened its mouth to laugh, making everything more indescribable. With sharp and white teeth, the weasel goblin constantly let out cries like laughter full of satisfaction. By this time, my uncle seemed to understand everything. It was not for nothing that my cousin climbed on the roof like that, it must have been because of this weasel goblin doing some evil trick that this happened. But why did he do that? My uncle still can't figure it out. The sudden outburst of anger caused my uncle to forget about looking for a doctor. He looked around and found a brick, without hesitation, he grabbed the brick and climbed onto the roof to see the weasel goblin to deal with it. Even though he saw my uncle approaching, the weasel goblin showed no fear and stood still. At this point, my uncle's fear was dissipated by anger. Whoever it is, just harming his family, he will deal with it. Even if this weasel goblin had turned into a monster, he was determined not to be afraid of it. The distance between my uncle and the weasel goblin narrowed more and more. The weasel goblin still refused to run away. It even stared into his eyes as if defiant. It made my uncle's anger increase more and more. It wasn't until my uncle raised the brick about to throw it at the weasel goblin that it started to run away. Initially, I knew the speed of these weasel goblins was very fast, but my uncle was still surprised at the speed of the weasel goblins in front of him. Seeing that the weasel goblin was about to escape, my uncle immediately angrily swung the brick in his hand. Along with attacking the weasel goblin, my uncle also kept shouting and cursing it terribly. Even at a reasonably close distance, my uncle still couldn't hit the weasel goblin. Its body is really flexible. With just a slight twist, it could avoid the brick that was thrown from my uncle's hand. My uncle was left alone on the roof, although still very angry. Still, he could only sigh as he watched the weasel goblin run farther and farther away without being able to stop it. My uncle suddenly remembered something, this happened a few days ago, but he forgot. Thinking for a while, my uncle suddenly understood that this could cause the weasel goblin holding hatred in his heart. What happened today was its revenge. According to my uncle's memory, a few days ago something happened. That day my uncle went to a friend's house in the village to help him with some work. At night, my uncle stayed to drink there and then went home. By the time my uncle got home, it was already very late. 
As soon as my uncle entered the yard, a sudden shadow caught his attention. Looking closely, he discovered a large weasel goblin with a chicken in its mouth. From the blood still dripping from the chicken's neck, he could tell that the weasel goblin had just caught it from his family's chicken coop. Ignoring the weasel goblin in front of him, my uncle looked into the chicken coop. It turns out that this weasel goblin not only sneaked into the chicken coop to catch a single chicken, it also killed all the chickens in the chicken coop. Rushing back to the chicken coop, my uncle's anger immediately rose uncontrollably. All the chickens his family worked hard to take care of for several months were bitten to death by the weasel goblins. Initially, the people in this area, when they saw the weasel goblins, were more or less avoiding them, but my uncle was so drunk that he couldn't keep his composure anymore. Looking to the side, I saw a shovel. My uncle did not hesitate to grab it. He immediately used it to chase the weasel goblins. Up until now, these weasel goblins have always raged without being stopped by humans. So was this weasel goblin. He didn't expect my uncle to attack him until he was hit by a shovel. At this point, it just let go of the chicken and found a way to run away. Although the weasel goblin released the chicken, my uncle still refused to let it go. He constantly chased to catch it. Faced with my uncle's aggressive attitude, the weasel goblin had no choice but to run around the yard to find a way to escape. It eventually jumped up a wall, where my uncle couldn't reach it. After climbing the wall and making sure my uncle couldn't attack it anymore, the weasel goblin stopped. It then used its angry eyes to stare at my uncle. It just stood there looking at him for a long time before it finally left. My uncle started cursing at the weasel goblins because the anger still hadn't subsided, plus being drunk. He warned it that if he let him see it again, he would take its life, not let it go away as quickly as this time. Returning to the chickens bitten to death by the weasel goblins, my uncle could only sigh in frustration. The anger also gradually subsided, he had to consider his family unlucky. After that, he went back to the house to sleep and didn't care about this anymore. My uncle himself did not expect the weasel goblin he chased the day before to cultivate into a yukai. It also carried this hatred in his heart and returned to take revenge on his family. Fortunately, everything was discovered early, so there were no severe consequences. The story of my aunt and uncle's family being hunted by weasel goblins for revenge soon spread throughout the surrounding villages. Sometime later, several similar cases made people all over the Northeast feel scared. Since then, no one dared to attack the weasel goblins anymore for fear of them coming back for revenge until a master passed through the area. With his mighty magic power, he ended the rampage of the weasel goblins.